everybody, um, the name is pronounced actually Jakub Jermák. Welcome to my talk about, uh, about DevLog in multi-server microkernel. And uh, let me start by making an observation uh, that, uh, that uh, multi-server microkernel with all the IPC between the various components is quite an interesting place for DevLog to occur. And because Heleno is a multi-server microkernel operating system, uh, we also uh, run into DevLog from time to time. So I thought that I will dedicate this talk to this topic. And for that reason, I recollected uh, one DevLog uh, from a long time ago, <coughs> actually one uh, which is four years old as of today, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, it's not uh, too complex and it's not uh, trivial either. And uh, uh, that will allow us to see how um, deadlock can be tackled. How can we actually build a mental image of the deadlock component in our mind. And it will also tell us something about uh, Helenos in the process of communication. <coughs> so uh, first, here are the ingredients that uh, we need in order to cause this deadlock to happen. So we need uh, a four-year-old four uh, version of Heleno. Uh, it's a mainline revision 12.19. It's uh, kind of difficult to reproduce this issue on the current Heleno, and it is also quite difficult to build that old uh, revision 12.19 with the current uh, tool chain. So um, it uh, takes some effort if you wanted to try it yourself. Anyway, this is our initial setup. Uh, we start the Helenos instance and all we have is the root file system, uh, which is uh, located on the initial, initial run disk device, uh, which is formatted as uh, pub. So uh, the first step that we do, we actually create um, a somewhat uh, large uh, file on that file system uh, so that it can uh, contain another file system as we will see later. So here is our image uh, located on that pub file system. Second step is we create a loopback device which will be backed by that file that we have just created. So attempt to read blocks from this device will be actually redirected to this file. So next step, uh, we format that new device as the minute file system. Okay. And the last step, which is necessary f uh, to reproduce this deadlock, is trying to mount uh, the device under slash data as minute file system. Uh, file system. But the problem is that the command will not return. So what we actually see on this line is the shell instance is using a built-in command called mount with hand. So it's not a dedicated command uh, called mount, but rather it is the shell instance itself that got hung. Okay, so uh, this is what the, I hope it's visible, uh, this is what the deadlock look, looks like four years ago. You see this was, uh, this was the respective mount command and it did not return. But uh, the system is not hung completely. There is still um, there are still some things that you could do. Uh, uh, you could work with the system in some way. For instance, you can try to debug the deadlock using uh, the built-in uh, debugging uh, uh, feature. Uh, one of those features, or the only feature actually, <laughs> is called uh, kernel control, and it is a kernel thread. If you switch uh, to the kernel console by uh, typing kcon in one of the uh, non wedged uh, non wedged uh, consoles, it will take you to a screen which looks like this. And I do understand that uh, the font is a little bit hard to see. Uh, the only idea beyond this uh, slide is to give you some impression what it looks like when you work in kconsole. But other than that, um, I I took some screenshots and then I textified all of them so that you will be able to see them like this. So this is this is the ordinary 
take a little awkward. Um, so what is the first step that we can actually take in case control in order to um, to root cause uh, this deadlock? Well, a good idea probably is to have a look at what processes uh, were running at the time. Well, what what processes are still running in the system? So uh, for that we have the tasks command in Kate Console, and when we type it in, it will give us a list of all processes that run. It will give us uh, process ID, process name, and some uh, some other data that are not uh, that might be interesting for for us at this moment. And um, when we uh, take a closer look, we will see the process the the process that that hangs. That's the shell instance and it has ID 27. We can also notice some other essential uh, processes like the VFS server, the FAT file system server, the file DB which is the block device backed by the file and the Minix uh, file system server. So this, this was the tasks command. That's one of the two, two commands that we will see today. Uh, the other one, the other command is called IPC and it takes one argument which is the, num uh, which is the ID of the process um, that we are interested in and it allows us to inspect the IPC state of that process. So uh, we know that the um, DBFH, the shell instance, has ID 27 so we can inspect its IPC state by typing IPC 27. KCONSOL will uh, give us this output is basically composed of uh, of two parts. The first part is a list of uh, IPC connections, the task at hand has to some other tasks, or if you will, processes. So uh, in this case we see that it's connected to the naming service, it has a couple of connections to the VFS, two connections to the console server, and uh, one connection to the location server. There is also the second part, which does not contain anything yet, but it will on the next slide, which lists um, IPC messages that um, were delivered to the tasks already, but the tasks still have not uh, answered them. In Helena IPC, the rule is that every single IPC message needs to be answered eventually. Okay, so... Um <coughs> We see that um, in this column, if uh, there is a non-zero value, it means that uh, the respective IPC connection has some active, uh, uh, has some unanswered messages that it sent to some other processes. So in this case, we see that uh, DBFH actually sent something to VFS using the IPC connection number five, and that the number of these messages is one. And that actually makes us interested in what is the IPC state of the, of the VFS process. So we repeat the process and uh, take a look at, at the IPC state of VFS. So again, we see the list of its IPC connections. And this time there is something new. That's the list of dispatch calls. Those are the calls that it received and still uh, has not answered. <coughs> So in this case, um, the first item on the list is uh, we see that it was sent from the from the shell instance. So it was this message uh, that we actually uh, that I talked about previously, and also that uh, kind of the method number of that message, which which um, identifies the message to the receiver by the method it knows what the sender actually wanted it to do. So we see that it's 1032. And now in order to know what 1032 actually means, we would have to go into Helena sources. But because uh, we don't have that much time, uh, you will have to trust me uh, when I tell you that actually 1032 means VFS in mount. So there is some attempt uh, going on. DBFH asks VFS to mount something. And as the next step, uh, there is uh, one active IPC connection which we see that the total of uh, sent messages 
is uh, actually two, and they were sent to the FAT file system server. So that grows our interest uh, in the FAT file system server. And uh, we follow the same path. Um, again, uh, kind of uh, repeating the same process again, uh, we, we type IPC7, get the list of uh, FAT IPC connection, and also the list of uh, dispatched, um, dispatched messages. Now, we are in a pretty similar situation to the last time. This time, the method of the message sent from VFS, this one, is 1029. And uh, again, by consulting source code, uh, we will be able to see that it is a VFS outmount. Now, um, what is going on? Uh, you need to understand that the VFS server is kind of a borderline server between the client and the file system server. So on one side of the connection, it stored the, the so-called VFS input protocol. That's why the in is in, is here. And on the other side, on the side which stores to all those file system servers, uh, <coughs> it's the VFS out output protocol. So there's a reason for the out here. And what VFS does, it basically translates, translates the VFS in mount message request uh, into VFS out mount request and forwards it to the respective uh, mount point, which in this case is the FAT uh, file system server. By looking um, at the active connection, we see that there is one uh, pending uh, message sent over IPC connection number eight to the minutes file system server. So we repeat the same steps again and uh, we have a look uh, at what uh, Minix file system server is doing. <coughs> um, so it's kind of the same thing over and over again. And now the method is 1030. So um, FAT here is actually the mount point file system server, whereas uh, Minix file system acts in the role of uh, a mounty or it's the mounted file. Uh, file system. So FAT sends him the VFS outmounted request. That's how it works in, in the Helenos uh, file system protocol. So uh, we match this 1030 to VFS outmounted. Uh, we know that it came from FAT, so everything kind of clicks for us. And uh, we can inspect uh, uh, its activities, like what messages it was sending to other time. So there is one actually sent to the file DB block device server, like this. We follow that path. And um, now uh, we see there is some message, IPC message uh, with method uh, 1026. And uh, by inspecting uh, the Helenos header that correspond to the block block device protocol, we see that actually 1026 means uh, block device read block. So what's going on here is that the Minix file system server, um, uh, the Minix file system which is being mounted actually wants to read some blocks from the underlying device, which is uh, file DB in this case. So it, it probably wants to read the read block, um, which is on that device. And uh, we see that actually it sent two messages to VFS. And uh, here uh, the circle kind of gets closed. We see that the messages are circulating in a closed circle, but we are not there yet. This is not the complete story. a glitch. Okay, um, so uh, we come again to uh, to VFS. We have already been there, so we already know, uh, for example, what uh, this is, right? So um, we now need to focus on the MS, uh, on the IPC messages that we have not explained yet or that we have not paid any attention to. This time, it's it's a message sent uh, by the file DB 
server as we are expecting and the method is 1025. Now, what does this file db block device server do? It is backed by an ordinary file which is located on some file system. So if you actually ask file db to read some block, it will have to go to that file system and read some uh, read the block from the file in that uh, file system. So um, what it needs to do, it needs to ask VFS to read, basically do the read operation on that file. That's what VFS in read stands for. Now, um, on our first visit of VF VFS, uh, you notice uh, that the number of pending messages was actually two, even though we were just mentioning, uh, we were uh, we were just uh, talking about this VFS out mount. So the second one, which kind of contributes to the sum of two, is is this one. That's the second message in which uh, VFS reacts to the VFS in read request. And it sends it to the FAT file system server again. We, we also have already seen what FAT was doing. But we only uh, talked about the first message. So uh, now we see that the message of, inter of interest is method 1025. And uh, in sources, we, we would find that 1025 actually corresponds to VFS out read uh, request. So again, as was the case with VFS in mount and VFS out mount translation, here VFS is actually translating the input protocol read request into its output protocol read request. It's just making it uh, understandable for the file system server. And in this regard, file db acts as a VFS client. Okay, so um, this is VFS out read message, and uh, there is the last message that uh, we haven't uh, spoken about. It's method eight. It's a little bit different method. It's a system method actually, and it's uh, it says it's called IPCM data read method. This is what actually the file db server sent to VFS and VFS then forwarded it to the FAT file system server. And the meaning of this message is this is actually the envelope where the, where the, the data read from, uh, from the IMG file located on the FAT file system server will be stored into. And then the, the when the message is replied, the reply will be uh, sent back to file db and then everything, all the IPC communication will kind of start to unfold back to DBS8. But it is not because we are not observing any further progress from the FAT file system server. FAT file system server is the place where everything seems to have stopped, right? There's nothing else to go to because we've already followed the path which had only one uh, one active call, uh, call, and it was the VFS out mounted. But it appears that FAT, as far as IPC is concerned, is not doing anything else. So this is um, when when we look at it from the big picture, uh, just in order to recapitulate. Uh, so BBS H BBS eight process was trying to mount something. It sent the request to VFS. It translated it for FAT. And then FAT uh, being the mount point sent uh, VFS out mounted request to MFS informing it that it it's being mounted. Uh, MFS uh, decided to read the boot block, so it had to go to its underlying block device. The underlying block device, uh, because it's a file backed block device, had to read some file from uh, the virtual file system, so it sent the VFS in read method, which got translated to VFS out read, and uh, the IPC M data read kind of followed it to the FAT file system server, and everything stopped there. So this is what we know. Um. <coughs> so so um, out of the 
the three messages that we can observe in the FAT file system server, there is no um, follow-up action on these two. This is what I've already said, there is no progress. So we need to actually find the answer for why there is no forward progress, why is nothing happening uh, with them, why FAT is not processing them. Now, there is one thing that we absolutely have to know in order to be able to find the answer. And that is something about uh, the Helenos IPC mechanism. Because in Helenos, uh, if you have an IPC connection, it will be handled uh, by a user space thread that we call Fibril or Fibril in Helenos. And there will be only one for each connection. So um, the picture shows the three possibilities. Uh, you, when, when there is a message coming over that IPC connection and the user space thread is ready, they will kind of pair and everything is fine. The message gets processed almost immediately. The other situation is that the fibril is there or the user space thread is there, but there is no message. So the fibril, the user space thread blocks and waits for a message to arrive. And uh, the third possibility is kind of the reverse of the previous one. There is a message, but no user space thread to handle it. And now uh, the reason for this situation may be that the user space thread, which was supposed to be here, is sleeping somewhere, is waiting for something, and can't pick up the message. Now, when we know that, um, we need to kind of memorize, or remember that we have already, that we have actually seen something suspicious when we were looking uh, at the VFS, uh, the VFS uh, IPC state diagram, and the suspicious thing here is number two. So, so that basically means that two messages when were sent over it, we see them here marked in red. So the first one was the VFS outmount request and the other one was VFS outreach. Now, isn't this really suspicious and doesn't it answer all our questions? Does it? May, uh, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but I can kind of reduce the situation into uh, this picture. So this was the situation uh, when VFS, out, uh, VFS mount request was sent. That's message number one. It was paired with the user space thread and everything was okay. But then, uh, in order to answer that VFS out mount request, this fibril uh, user space thread had to make some other IPC uh, calls and sent some other IPC messages. So it kind of went to all the other tasks and tentatively is waiting for VFS, which is sending the second message, which is the VFS out reach message over the same physical IPC connection. That's why there is number two. But at this point, the user space thread, which should be handling it, is sleeping, is waiting for it. So FAT waits for VFS and VFS in some respect waits for FAT. There's a reason why we have this deadlock. Is that clear? So this is, um, like if you look at the revision following uh, the mainline revision 1219, revision 1220 obviously, <laughs> uh, this is the fix and also it, it reveals uh, the real culprit. So before, um, just pay attention to the two last lines, we do VFS exchange release followed by an async wait for. So um, the first one, VFS exchange release that corresponds to making the IPC connection available for further use. And then uh, async wait for, as the name suggests, means basically waiting for the message. So what we had been doing before the fix was that we first said, okay, this IPC connection is available for anyone who is interested in it. And now we will wait for the answer to that VFS uh, mount outmount message. If uh, so, so the bug is you need to swap the order of these two operations. You first need to wait for the message, which kind of 
keep that IPC connection occupied until it's answered. And then only after you receive the answer for the VFS out mount request, you can release it for further reuse. Right? So uh, that's it. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, yeah. The graph? This one or, or the big picture? So um, the mount operation is kind of a uh, complex one. And uh, so, so what are the roles of the file system? The FAP one is the mount key. It, that's the one which is trying, which is the mount point. I, it is not li like this, this one and this one. Um, well, the underlying block device here, that's the initial run, uh, run disk not depicted here but because it doesn't play any role in it we don't we don't need any blocks to read from that in order to know the situation so um, there is there will be it's a kind of hidden but there will be um, a lookup operation which corresponds uh, to, to the mount and VFS uh, tries to identify the mount point and now it already knows that it's the FAP one. So it tells FAP, hey FAP, uh, somebody wants to do a mount on you. And it sends some uh, additional information so that FAP actually knows that it, uh, it is the Minix file system server. And uh, if everything is okay, it's it is the FAP which sends the VFS out mounted. It's like, hey MFS, by the way, I mounted you to one of my subtrees. This is this is how it works. If, uh, for example, if there were some, well not for example, if everything worked fine after the fix and you wanted to mount some other file system uh, on top of MFS, something on MFS, the VFS would do the lookup. It would uh, communicate the whole uh, path to the mount point first to the FAP. FAP will resolve, will resolve everything it can, and then it will forward the request farther to MFS. It will do its job, and if it actually finds the mount point in itself, it will start behaving like FAP is behaving now. Data? No. Thank you very much.